So thank you guys so much for still staying with us. When we, when we left off before the PSA, we were talking about this fear of blackness. And Maya, you were, you know, talking a little bit about that. And I feel like almost, you know, when I hear that police don't want to work her concerts and, you know, they felt like it was a, a brute, like an attack on them. I feel like it's like they're almost trying to silence her. Almost like now she put, you know, she put those whatever messages she was trying to put out there on the platform that they're trying to silence black women. Do you feel like we're still being silenced even in the year of 2016 now? Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> <laughs> and we all say yes. 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 Yeah. So yeah. What, what is, can I get a little bit more about what you guys think about that? I mean... What do you guys think when they say You're like about the police? Yeah, the, well, the police. That well, just like you know, just people just wanting to silence us and like you know, even when I think about you know Melissa Harris Perry, which I think you guys yes, all know yeah. from mm -hmm. MSNBC, she had a, a fantastic show um, where she was you know educating us about all sorts of issues in the black community. I mean, 60, 55 percent of her guests were people of color, and just last month her show got canceled. And they said, you know, we don't want you, you know, doing the show. You lost all the rights to the to the show. Now we just want you kind of just being like a robot and reading off, you know, whatever we tell you to do. And she's like, no, I'm not going to be anybody's mammy. I'm not going to just do whatever you want me to do because before I had that platform, mm -hmm. but now they're trying to take that away from her. And she's mm -hmm. a she's a political professor. You know, yeah. she should be able to talk about, you know, things that you know that's going on in our camp in the, in the presidential campaign now, but they don't want her to talk about that. So it's almost like we're it's like opportunities that we had before where we broke those barriers now they're like being locked up again but they were I mean truth of the matter is she was a hired hand on the plantation come on mm -hmm. and Roland Martin a few months mm -hmm. actually three months before that went down he said watch the shows start to shut down and lose their black hosts because mm -hmm. the mass media and the major population doesn't need Negro interpreters oh. for the black president I mean, he called it, but those of us who've been in the media, and I've been in it oh, many years, mm -hmm. um, until you own something from exactly. beginning to end, you yeah. never really own it. And so, you know, Melissa Harris Perry, come on, man, everybody knew. The handwriting was on the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, you already were being replaced by whatever her name is, Rachel Maddow or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it, you know, for her to say, you know, they took my show, it was never your show to begin with. Mm -hmm. They were already paying for it. You were the person that had the, you know, the flavor of the month mm -hmm. that they needed to be palatable to the people who, um, I mean, Roland Martin called it. He, he called it and he says, all of these people are going to start losing your shows. So you had um, Al Sharpton. All of a sudden, he's only in the weekend. Yeah. You had a series it's, of people start to lose their shows. Too is like you know, we have to be able to see the writing on the wall. I like to call it like they, the system allows you to have the illusion of inclusion. There it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. I saw it with Soledad O'Brien on CNN. After she did Race in America, that entire series, yeah. that really went down deep. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Talk about things that are uncomfortable. After the series about. was over, yeah. it was like Soledad is gone, mm -hmm. you know, she and they, they let her go. And I, I recently saw her on the CBS This Morning with Charlie Rose and, mm -hmm. and Gail and, and others. But I was like, they rotate us like that. You know, I even think about Robin on mm -hmm. Good Morning America. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You know, Diane Sawyer and others have been the lead, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, she can't be just the lead. You know, you have to have somebody there, you know, to... Uh -huh. to We're always, mm -hmm. just like in movies, we're always the best friend. We're always just like, you know... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can we talk about the movies? No, 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 no. Can we talk about the movies? Can we talk about the movies? Yeah, we can talk about before the we get... The gods of yeah, yeah. Egypt are white. <coughs> That was banned in Egypt. Come on now. Oh. The Americans are the only ones that are tripping about that. The, the rest of the world is going, yeah, and. Yeah. I mean, I it's always things. been like that. If you've ever studied film, you studied movies, mm -hmm. you've studied, you know, music. I mean, hip hop was, was oh. revolutionary yeah. in its original form. Mm -hmm. That was the voice of the people, the voice right. of the street, fight the power, mm -hmm. headed for self destruction. The last I mean, poets. You, okay? And so there was a, and, and there's been plenty of, um, articles and, and shows done that said there was a concerted effort to change that dialogue because mm -hmm. our, our young people are programmed mm -hmm. by music. Yeah. Our young people are programmed by the media and black youth watch more television than anyone mm -hmm. wow. for a lot of different reasons, mm -hmm. but more than anyone. And so, and they have it in their ears, directly mm -hmm. to their brain. Yeah. So there's a concerted effort to change that the words to change the lyrics to change the beats to program our kids and mm -hmm. we slept at the wheel mm -hmm. you know the fact that more 
um, black teachers have lost their jobs yeah. since integration. Yeah. I mean, and, and so natural disasters have been used. Hurricane mm -hmm. Katrina, 7,000 black teachers lost their jobs. Yeah. And then the charter schools took over and they hired none of these black teachers back. Yeah. Since 1954, all the black schools and institutions that we started to educate our people after it was no longer illegal to learn how to read and write and talk to each other, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they were shut down in the name of integration and then all the teachers were deemed um, unfit to teach white students. Yeah. So there are hundreds of thousands of teachers and that was part of the strong black middle class. If you were a teacher in the black community, that was preacher, teacher. I mean, you were up there. That was yeah. a respected position. And so you don't even have our kids. The majority of our children are being, see, I'm about to go there. Yeah. On purpose because you have these young white female teachers who are afraid of our kids that don't know our culture, that don't care about it. Mm -hmm. And they, oh, our little children treating our little kids like, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, um, Chia pets and yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. these are our children and we're letting that happen yeah. We are mm -hmm. the original teachers of well, our kids and we're letting them get away with it Sharon, mm -hmm. I totally agree with everything you're saying. I think we have to have another show about just education yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. but but I, want, I do want to bring it back yes. to a point that you said about yeah. music and how it was, you know, yeah. educating. I mean, yeah. especially, I feel like nowadays, you feel like that's coming back. I mean, especially for you as a musician, Shay, I mean, you're always being co conscious. You mm -hmm. always have strong messages in all your songs, your poetry. Do you feel that other mainstream artists are starting to get on that loop again? I mean, when I think about Ke like artists Kendrick like Kendrick Lamar, Lamar and things like that, yeah, like I do think so, but I, I don't think the women are. Yeah. You know, I, and as you said, you know, Beyonce mm -hmm. doesn't write public policy. That's not what she does. But she yeah. writes lyrics. She can decide what she wants to say, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be you know, the best yeah. way for me to, you know, empower myself is through making more money and paper. Yeah. That's not the message that she needs to send to young women. Yeah. 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 Right. Awesome. So, and I, and I okay. think too with hip hop culture, you know, like politicking with the sisters was launched like 18 years ago, and I remember sitting with our organization and it's writing grants and it was like this outlaw culture, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and so in those early years, again, the revolutionary outlaw mm -hmm. and, and it was so empowering for black girls, you know, in the research, it's like, yeah, they're empowered by the culture, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, there was this level of misogyny and sexism yeah. mm -hmm. as we saw the culture evolve. And to go back to mm -hmm. media, when we look at it, right, the, the corporation that the city and the state just gave $150 million in tax breaks to GE, mm -hmm. they own CBS. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're one of the top ten All multinational mm -hmm. corporations mm -hmm. in the world. Right. And GE has history back to our ancestors. Right. Wow. You know, and so when you look at that, and, and Noam Chomsky wrote a book called Manufacture oh, Consent. Noam Chomsky, yeah. And that's where you'll see the breakdown, even in the record industry. Mm. There are subsidiaries of subsidiaries of subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. People right. think, oh, Jay-Z owns Rock Nation. No, no. that's Live, Live Nation. Nation. Yeah. And, and yeah. Jay-Z a little bit. It's just you know? gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. So Puffy just, like, and Bad Boy, you that know, that's everything. like, you know, a little piece of Puffy and yeah. then other people. Yeah. Right. And so when you look at it, it's mm. like, we have to get to that place of like, yo, this is ours and be unapologetic about it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, because mm -hmm. others, others are like, you know, they're like, no, you can't come here. This is, you know, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. because I remember listening to something about Dr. King not too long ago and, and Mother Coretta. And the conversation was what Dr. King was struggling for was for desegregation, mm -hmm. was to end the segregation laws. It wasn't necessarily around integration. Well, it was initially. Yeah. And so when we think about it, those are like two separate tracks. I know like other like educators in the arena. One of them was a, a professor at Tuskegee mm -hmm. years before we were even on the planet. And he was talking about, you know, it was a different system when we had our own schools. Right. Yeah. And I recently saw in Eyes of the Prize, Chapter 8, about the um, Brownsville um, in Brooklyn, oh, yeah. when the family mm -hmm. and the communities took over that school. And the yeah. Jewish mm -hmm. teachers fought for two them. years. Oh, wow. And the teachers' union was there, like, against the families. That's and right. for two years, they were able to prove, you know, and show that the community can do for themselves and take care and teach their children. Mm -hmm. And then they sent in the police. That's right. Uh -huh. And there's a, there's a woman here in Boston, a white woman ally who was a teacher. When I talked about showing this piece in the coming weeks or months, she said, sent me a whole testimony about on that bridge having to face NYPD when they came in to try to stop the community mm -hmm. from being able to mm -hmm. control their community kids. Community control. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So we really do need to, like, you know, be unapologetic, like you said, and really try to own our own and yeah. get back to that system again. Well, we right? always and, did at yeah. one point. And, and, um, and, and why I've been so adamant about Black Teachers Matter mm -hmm. and standing out there for six weeks, Black Teachers Matter, and, you know, people come up and go, oh, all teachers matter. And I said, well, all teachers will matter when black teachers matter. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. we are the ones that have struggled, suffered, and died. And everybody steps on our back and gets over and then looks at us and pff, forget, mm. you know. And so, yeah. you know, so the dialogue gets, gets changed as kumbaya, you know, people yeah. of color, no. Yeah. That's not the same thing. You can't compare immigrants to former slaves. That's a different scenario. That's a different frame of reference. That's a different fight. Yeah. And it's a different struggle. And so, you know, allowing other people to, to program, to take our music, which mm -hmm. they've always tried to do, take our music and us give it up. See, they've always been trying to take it. You've always had, like, uh, rock and roll. Well, and Sharon, you had, you know, I'm so Elvis sorry Presley. to break you up a little bit, but we're going to take a short break and we're going to come oh. right back to that because <laughs> we do want to talk about Black Lives Matter and everything that you're saying. Stay tuned. Continue the conversation with us. Watch part three when we talk about Black Lives Matter and the importance of our voices. We're celebrating Women's History Month in a big way. Stay tuned.